If you're looking for a mini controller that allows you to control and navigate your Ableton Live set, plus the ability to create set list, reorder songs without moving a single song in your Ableton Live set, well, I may have found a great solution for you. This Leo Box controller from GoRoo Controllers is absolutely amazing. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up and use with Ableton Live. So first let's talk about the controller itself and how it's connected to Ableton Live. So uh, here's the controller. It's got a really great screen. There's a couple different display modes where you can see some extra information. I have this set in the most simple possible mode uh, that there is. Plus you have these great buttons. Um, and I say great buttons because I really do love, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but they, they click pretty, pretty loudly when you press them, which is a nice kind of reassurance. They're very solid. They're very sturdy, um, as you use them. So you're going to be really confident on stage to, uh, to press a button and to know that you confidently press the button. Plus you get this great, uh, uh encoder that allows you to uh, navigate your set. Uh, and this is super helpful, particularly, I just did an event where I had a pretty large live set. This is a 15 song set, uh, multiple artists for a live TV taping. And I needed a way to navigate the set really, really quickly. And this Leo box is a great solution for a setup like that. So let's talk about how it's connected to my computer. So I've got a USB cable going from the controller to Ableton Live. And one of the things that separates the Leo box, I think from some other set list management solutions is it doesn't require a plugin. So if it's not using a plugin, uh, then how is it connected to Ableton Live? Well, again, I've got the USB cable going from the Leo box to my computer. Let's go into Ableton Live. We'll go to preferences, which is command comma if we're on a Mac. We'll go to link tempo MIDI. Uh, and you can go under the control surface area here and you'll see Leo Box Ableton 11. What's great about this is uh, Guru Controllers made a custom Ableton Live remote script uh, that allows me to control Ableton Live directly from the controller. And what that means to you is you don't have to load any plugins in your Ableton Live set, plus the Leo Box is compatible with every edition of Ableton Live. Light, intro, standard, and sweet. And it's compatible with Ableton Live 9 and higher. So again, no matter what setup scenario you find yourself in, this is a really great solution. Plus, I like the fact that I could just kind of leave my Ableton Live set bare and I don't have to uh, worry about loading any plugins or having, uh, you know, any extra layers on top of my live set. So let's talk about how easy and simple it is to uh, just navigate your live set. There's a couple different modes that the Leo Box has. And let's talk about the most basic, simple mode uh, to start with. So there's two modes for the Leo box. I currently have mine set up in all tracks mode. And I think this is the best mode to start with because it's gonna allow you to control and navigate your Ableton Live set as is. We don't even have to deal with the set list management uh, stuff quite yet. And I think this is a great way to get started. So right now what you're seeing on my Leo box is the name of every locator in my Ableton Live set. So if you're like me and you typically have a song that has a lot of locators, like for example, I've got a locator here for verse one, but I don't wanna see verse one, pre-chorus, chorus, all of those sections on my Leo box. What you can do is you could just simply rename your locator and add this uh, little parenthesis around it. And when you do that, that's going to exclude it from the Leo box. And this is a great way to say, okay, I only want you to read the locators of the songs, and then I can use this command to exclude locators. So this way you can have a live set with tons of locators and still be able to access it on the Leo box and still be able to navigate without having a list full of tons and tons of locators. So again, we've got our Leo box set up in all tracks mode, and let's just navigate our live set to show you how simple and easy this is to use. So first I can scroll and use this wheel and you can see that it's changing the next song that I'm going to. So the next song that I'm going to down here, let's select uh, Reckless Love. That's what I wanna go to next. So if I press play, it's gonna automatically jump to Reckless Love. You'll see Reckless Mo Love moves up to the top. At the bottom here is the next song that will play. So I can use the uh, forward button, I can use the uh, rewind button to jump back to go in reverse to choose uh, another song, let's say, haven't seen it yet. And uh, I could also use this encoder to really quickly navigate my live set. And when I'm ready to do that next song, I can press play. Um, and that's going to play my next song. Now it's important to know, I'll take you over to Ableton Live, that all those moves, those button presses I was making, uh, all correspond with global quantization. So let me pause this. Let's go back over to our Leo box and let's select uh, this song here, okay? So now I'm gonna show you in Ableton Live, I'm gonna press play on the Leo box and you'll see it jumps there to that song, Lord, I Need You. Uh, and let's go back to our Leo box here. Uh, let's go to the song Redeemer, okay? But I'm gonna show you in Ableton Live. So one, two, I already selected it. Three, 
four, and then it jumps right at the next downbeat of one. And then on the Leo box, I'm gonna press pause to pause that. Uh, and what's really nice about this um, that is I think kind of a unique setup to the Leo box is if I press pause again, let's show you back, uh, take you back to Ableton Live. If I press pause again, it's gonna pick, off, uh, pick back up where I left off which is a really nice feature, particularly uh, in rehearsals. If you stop, hey, let's pick back up where we left off. I can press pause again to uh, to pick back from there. Uh, and then I can also, in Ableton Live, I can, let's show you actually on the Leo box so you see this. If I double press pause while it's playing, it's gonna start back at the beginning. So let's press play again, and then let's start back at the beginning. I can double click and that's gonna start me back at the beginning of my song. So a lot of really cool features that allows me to navigate my Ableton Live set in a really hands-off way. And I don't know if you noticed or not, there's a big giant screen here that makes us the perfect solution for someone that doesn't wanna have a computer sitting next to them. So imagine as a keys player, have your keyboard and have the Leo box sitting on top of your keyboard. Uh, maybe a drummer, you have this attached next to your hi-hat stand and you could easily just press play to go between songs. Uh, you could use your, uh, your encoder here to select between songs and really have freedom and flexibility to jump around uh, your set without having to rebuild your Ableton Live set which is really, really great. Now let's talk about actually building and creating set lists, managing set lists on the Leo box. But before I do that, I wanna ask you to consider subscribing. I post a brand new tutorial every Friday here on YouTube and a brand new episode of my podcast Behind the Space Bar on Mondays. All of that's free to you. All you have to do is hit subscribe and enable the bell icon so you don't miss out on any great reviews or tutorials like this one. Okay, so let's build a set list on the Leo box. So I'm gonna press menu here. I'm gonna go down to set list and I'm going to add a set list. So let's go into set list five and let's build our set list. So I'm gonna go to modify set list here and we're gonna add a track. We can scroll down and let's take a look at all the different songs, all the locators that are named properly in my set list here. So as I click a song, it's going to add it to my set list in that order, okay? So let's do this one, let's go here. Redeemer, let's do Scars in Heaven, Reckless Love, and look what you've done, okay? So now I'm gonna press back and you can see my set list set up here. Now, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you, you're in rehearsal and something happens to change. I mean, I know artists know exactly what they want and they never change their minds, but let's say you happen to work with that rare artist who does change their mind. Um, let's reorder our set list really quickly. So uh, actually we want Reckless Love to be at the top of our set. Great, super easy to do. So I'm gonna scroll down here to Reckless Love. I'm going to click this. I wanna click move. I'm just gonna drag this where I want it. Let's make it uh, at the top of our set. Okay, and I'm gonna press back and then let's load our set list on our Leo box. So I'm gonna press load. You see, I have six songs in my set list and I'm currently on song six of my six song set list. So let's go to song one. So I can navigate by scrolling to the right, uh, scrolling to the left and let's go all the way to the left here to start. Let's press play. You'll see we start back at song one. Again, to navigate my set, I'm just gonna keep pressing play and that's gonna jump between songs. Or even while it's playing, I can navigate and go, nope, let's actually jump to this one. And I can click that and we're gonna jump directly to that song. Again, I get the ability to do all of this directly from the controller without having to look at my Ableton Live screen, without having to have a screen um, open in Ableton Live to, to view a set list window. This makes it really, really simple and easy to do. Now you may have noticed in my set list that I had a couple songs that had some times attached to them. Um, let me show you what that looks like. So let's see if we can find a song here in Ableton Live uh, where I have this name properly and I can show you all the info. Okay, so this is a perfect example. So this is Haven't Seen It Yet. You can see I've got uh, a BPM, I've got a key, and I've got uh, length information, however long that song is. Let's go back to our Leo box because uh, there's a different view that uh, I kind of mentioned at the beginning. This is the simplest view possible. Let's go to menu, let's go to settings. Uh, let's go to screen preferences here and let's do standard, okay? So now as I navigate this, you can see this song has a time attached to it, 140. Uh, let's go to haven't seen it yet. And you can see I've got all the information I need there. 140 BPM, the uh, correct key, as well as the time added into the set list. You can see uh, just using this, this naming convention in Ableton Live up here, if I name my locator with that, that information carries over to the Leo box, which again makes it really simple to navigate. Uh, and the key feature in particular is really helpful if you have uh, the same song and, and maybe a couple different keys that you wanna have access to in one Ableton Live set. 
So the way I would approach this, if I was you, if you're working with a large amount of songs, a large repertoire of songs, what you wanna do is take a template, use that template to format every single one of your songs in your set, and then build a set with all of those songs. So I call this the three-part framework for using tracks. Uh, you could get a free track template to try this with by heading to from studio to stage.com slash template. But you wanna format all your songs and then build a master set of all of your content. And then the way that the Leo box fits into your setup that, that makes this really, really nice is again, I can have multiple set lists on my Leo box. So I could go to set list here and we could say, okay, let's have this one set list for um, when we're playing a shorter set. And then we have this set list for a longer set. And I can leave the same Ableton Live set loaded on my computer, but I can go here and say load set list. And that's gonna change the set list that I'm navigating from my Leo box. And in case you, you're wondering, well, Will, what if I wanna play a song that's not loaded into the Leo box? Well, at any time I can just go to my computer, select the locator and press play. And you can play any song that's in your Ableton Live set, even though, uh, even if it's not currently loaded on the set list on your Leo box. So in addition to all this, a couple other really great features that I like about the Leo box is you could actually have multiple Leo boxes connected to the same computer. So your drummer could have access, you could have a playback tech side of stage uh, that has access, and each of you could control your Ableton Live computer at different times. Plus there is a connection on the back of the Leo box, a, a I believe 3.5 millimeter jack that you could convert that to five pin MIDI to actually have a MIDI output from Ableton Live through your Leo box to any additional pieces of gear, which again, makes this just a, a, another additional, uh, it provides even more value to this box that's, that's again, already packed full of features. So who is this MIDI controller for? I think this is the perfect MIDI controller if you're looking for a way to control and navigate a, your Ableton Live set, in particular, a very large Ableton Live set. I think it's the perfect MIDI controller if you're looking for a way to build and reorder uh, your song in your set list and build set lists directly on a controller. I think it's a perfect MIDI controller if you're looking for a tabletop MIDI controller that could fit on a keyboard, maybe fit on a, a table if you're a playback tech. And I think it's the perfect MIDI controller if you have Ableton Live intro uh, or standard and you're still looking for some really great set list features that are only available in plugins that are created for Ableton Live suite. So for more information about the Leo box and to purchase, make sure to click the link in the description of this video. And again, if you want more suggestions on the best gear for you to use on stage, then head to from studio to stage.com slash gear, download my brand new gear guide, which is completely updated for 2023. And you'll get all my suggestions on what's the best gear for you to use live on stage. And also make sure to hit subscribe and enable the bell icon so you see when I post our next tutorial and review. Uh, it's completely free to you and this is going to make sure that you see exactly when every video goes live thanks so much for watching hope you have a great week and we'll see you on the next one take care everybody bye